now while you're watching this video please remember to like share this video subscribe to my channel and click the bell icon for notifications of future videos thank you well hello there welcome back to my channel guys yes today i have for you yet again another exciting video right i must apologize for not having put out any video saturday and sunday re-adventism but i will certainly make up for that in the week the videos will come in this week today monday or tuesday rather september 2021 you should get this video by that time tuesday september 21 2021 right it's a very short video as you can see and for this video i won't be doing much editing right i'll more just be talking and what i'll do i'll provide two links that i'll put in the comment section for you guys to see right one of them is supposed to be a pdf file i'm not sure if i'll be able to send it but i'll try or if it's not able to send you guys can actually google it the title of the book that i'll be reading from the name of it is the line for god and it's the 11th edition most former seven day adventists know it even Elsie Thunder Larristan made reference to it more than once in some of his um, videos. Right? I happen to have this book on PDF. You can download it on Google. Just type in Line for God and take the 11th edition. In one of the chapters that, um, chapter, chapter, um, let me see, three. One of the chapters is titled Ellen White Falsifies the History of the Reformers. This is what we want to talk about. Were there, were, were there any reformers or church fathers who were actually Sabbatarians? This is what we want to look at. Now, the reason why I've chosen to do a video like this, it is because I've been having a particular, a particular commenter who have been constantly commenting in my comment section, talking about me attacking Protestants. Me attacking the Protestants and their beliefs, right? Like take for instance, my video titled Christ is the end of the law. The schoolmaster, the Torah, we are no longer under the law. I think that's the title here, we are no longer under the law. We are, we are not under the law but under grace. Christ is the end of the law. The schoolmaster, the Torah, we are not under the law but under the grace. With that video, you can go on it and check it out for yourself. It's in my playlist section titled The Law and the Covenants and it's a very recent video too. The name of the person is Stefan Van Vuren and he says, Once again you're attacking the Protestant reformers. You're attacking your own Protestant roots. He has been commenting like this. In several of my videos he's been saying the same thing that I am attacking the Protestant roots. And he sent a video in one of, um, on one of my videos and the title of it is the reformers and the law of god ten commandments and the speaker is walter veit walter j veit short version and most of you um sds our former sds would have come across one of their quote-unquote stalwarts walter veit this guy is one of the main pro um pro proponents of um seven day adventism within the seven day adventist church he along with guys like Doug Bachelor, right and a number of them i'm not going to name all of them right now but ironically enough this video is uploaded by a youtuber named jackson john so he apparently took a took a clip right from a larger video from walter veit i don't know how to get the larger video right but i'll pin the um the video in the comment section for you guys to see it right now Walter Veit made mention of a lot of quotes, right? And I'm not sure where he got those from. I wouldn't put it past him that they will make up stuff in order to be, uh, uh, um, to prove what they want to say, you know, right? I have a video in in um on, on a series that I did titled Cult 101, and one of the videos, the title is, the title for one of the videos is, let me tell you guys, confirmation bias and cognitive dissonance called 101 number two so when you listen to what walter Vate is saying you will see that it actually proves what i'm saying in that video that one of the things with cults is that they consistently look for things right 
anything that is happening in, in, in the world and so forth and try to pin it in their beliefs. You call it confirmation bias to basically prove what they're saying. When you realize that their arguments can't stand on a biblical basis and so forth, this is what they are oftentimes privy to do. Right, guys? They are oftentimes privy to do these things. Right? No, I'm not going to say that um, even we evangelicals might not try to use confirmation bias to prove what we are saying. Sometimes I think evangelicals do that. And, these, uh, uh, and, they, and they resort to these confirmation bias which basically can't stand to prove what they're actually saying. So I'm being fair. It's not only the cults that actually do this. Right? But the evidence is that I am going to give. Right? I am not certain. I don't know the source where Walter Vick got his stuff from, but I do know one thing that the source where I'm going to take from is basically a credible source, right? So I don't know where he got his stuff from. Now from the book Line for God, right? The author basically pointed out um, four, uh, a few reformers, William Tyndale, Ulrich Zwingli, John Calvin, and Martin Luther and basically stated that none of these individuals were basically Sabbath, Sabbath keepers. You can't go, if you go on Google and you try to Google them, you'll realize that none of these guys are, were actually Sabbatarians. So what the author is basically saying that Ellen White in her book, Great Controversy, she puts them out in such a way right which would which would make it appear as though these individuals were basically sabbatarians and they were not if even if you download um a john calvin i dare you to download john calvin commentary right just bible commentary and just look on his commentary on the law right look on his commentary on the law galatians and so forth do the same thing for Martin Luther. I used to have a Martin Luther um, commentary, but I can't find it on Google now. Google Play Store, I don't know why. But I dare you guys to go and check it out and you'll realize for me, for, um, by, by looking at it that John Calvin, Martin Luther, none of these guys are basically Sabbatarians. As a matter of fact, it is from John Calvin that we get the belief, Calvinists, right? Where, we believe, where, where he believes in... Um, eternal salvation meaning that you can't lose your salvation by no means that alone should tell you that there is no way he could be a sabbatarian because the law tell you that you have to do it and if you don't do it you're damned you know so you can't believe in eternal security and at the same time believe in the law because the man that do it them shall live in them this is what the bible says about the law so that argument alone should tell you that john calvin is not a sabbatarian Likewise is Martin Luther, the just shall live by faith. Martin Luther believes in salvation by grace alone through faith, outside of the law or outside of any works. He was not a Sabbatarian. I'm not going to read the quotes because for some reason the light in my eyes and I can't see, see them properly, but I'll try to post the link for you guys to see it. Right? That none of these guys are basically Sabbatarian. It's all riddled in the book, Line for God. Not only that, a link that I have that shows some quotes from early church fathers. Right? You'll see that none of these church fathers was basically Sabbatarians. You see quotes from the Didache, Letter of Barnabas, right? Ignatius. And I think I, I pointed out some of this in one of my videos, you know title sabbath or uh, saturday or sunday does it matter right you can go back in the video i did read for read quotes from, from from this very same link right justin martyr which was one of christ uh, christendom's very first apologies he was never a sabbatarian tertullian right none of the great church fathers of old none of them saw any light in sabbatarianism right or again Peter, Arch Archbishop of Alexandria, Cyprian, Victorinus, I'm telling you the names, you know, you, 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 Eusebius, I'm not sure if I pronounced that correctly, guys, right? The Council of Laodicea, John Chris, Chris, Chrysostom, 
Augustine of Hippo. It gives you a list of quotes from the church fathers. And you'll realize, guys, that none of them was basically Sabbatarians. Not one of them were Sabbatarians. And yes, it doesn't, it doesn't matter what you guys try. Every attempt that you make will actually fail. Your attempts fail when it comes to scripture. And your attempts fail when it comes to history as well. Why not just submit and accept the gospel of grace, right? And leave the law alone for where it belongs, at the cross. Leave it there, guys, and stop trying to take it up back from the cross. It has no place in your life as a Christian, right? The only thing that should be substantial for you is basically faith. This is what you walk by faith, not by the law. You don't need the law. So please, guys, in the name of Jesus, leave the law alone. Leave it alone where it belongs. Let it stay at the cross and let it remain there. So with that being said, I end this video. If you enjoy it, you know what to do, guys. Like, comment, subscribe, and share this video. Bye-bye now.